All right. Good evening, everyone. Thank you very much for joining us. We appreciate you being here uh, on a Thursday evening to learn a little bit about some of our teacher certification programs that we have available here at uh, the University of Houston downtown and in the College of Public Service. So uh, I know we've got a few people kind of getting on, getting joined. We'll have a few more that will be coming along. Um, so we are very happy to have you here this evening. Uh, I'll go ahead and uh, get started. We have a lot of information that we are going to present in a short amount of time, but I will let you know that uh, we're recording this, so that way if you miss anything, we'll be sure and and uh, send a recording of this info session to you all uh, tomorrow so you can look back on or share with someone who you think might be interested in these programs as well. Uh, my name is Corey Kilgore. I am Assistant Director of Graduate Studies for the UHD College of Public Service. Uh, so I'd like to welcome you this evening to learn um, about uh, our teacher certification programs here. We have two programs uh, that we're going to discuss this evening, our alternative certification program, and also our Master of Arts in Teaching program, our MAT with teacher certification. Uh, so I am a, a person that you will be communicating with and hearing from a lot as you start going through the application process. Um, and enrolling in these programs. And I would also like to introduce the uh, program director for both of these, uh, Dr. Diane Miller. Dr. Miller, if you'd like to introduce yourself. Hi, everyone. We're so glad that you're here with us this evening. Currently, I'm serving as the assistant department chair for graduate studies. So as Mr. Kilgore just said, that encompasses ACP and the MAT with ACP. Um, and I'm also one of the literacy professors in the department. So we're glad you're here. All right, thank you very much. So uh, as we mentioned, we'll be um, discussing two different programs. We're going to kind of go back and forth and, and kind of compare some of these programs a little bit to each other uh, so you can make an informed decision on which one of these might be the best option for you. Uh, so we will go ahead and get started and talk a little bit about the benefits of our teacher certification programs in general. So I'll turn it back over to Dr. Miller uh, to discuss that. Well, this is my favorite slide. This is the one where I get to brag on our department a little bit and kind of tell you what our atmosphere here is. Um, I don't know if any of you got your undergraduate degrees from UHD. If you're Gators, I see Alfreda nodding. Yes, your former Gator. Yes. So you can probably do this slide with me if you'd like to, but um, I can cover the high points. And if I leave anything out, you can just let me know. Um, so our departmental focus is on urban teaching. You'll notice that our department name is not the Department of Education, it's the Department of Urban Education. It's because we take our mission to prepare teachers for the Houston area very seriously. And in our coursework, we keep in mind high need schools such as Title I schools and making sure that our students are prepared to teach those students who need us the most. Um, so that is, we're embedded in the community. We are part of H-Town. We're in H-Town. We are absolutely, we're not a huge university by any means, but we're not small either because Houston's not small. So we serve the needs of our area very specifically. Um, our faculty are very practice oriented. Yes, we look at research. We try to inform our teaching with the latest things that we found out about best practices in education. Yes, we do that. But we're also very honed into our practical experience that we bring to the professorate. So um, for instance, I was in K through 12 education for 20 years before I came to UHD. And that's very important that we stay connected to local districts so that we're preparing you to teach in the most authentic and relevant ways possible. Um, we do use that research that we conduct ourselves and that we hear from conferences and from reading to make sure that our classes are focused on constant improvement and that we're helping prepare you with the pedagogical skills that you'll need to be a good teacher. And, and here's the lovely thing is that all of this comes at a bargain. We're one of the most affordable universities in the state of Texas. And so um, that's kind of nice, right? can't turn that down at all. And then uh, with these two programs, you're looking at evening classes, 
we understand that you may be working during the daytime and so you're you're trying to balance um things so we have smaller classes with very personalized support to get you through it's not a um lightweight program by any means yes it's fast tracked but we are there to support you to get it get you to have high quality preparation even though the timeline is pretty short and mr kilgore is going to go into that timeline a little bit later Alfreda, did I leave anything good out about UHD that I should have said? Nope, that was it. Okay, good. All right. <laughs> All right. So um, looking at our teacher certification programs and basically what our areas of certification are, you know, so a lot of times people will come to us asking, you know, can I get certified in this particular area? Uh, th this is what, what you see in front of you is what is available through our programs. Uh, of course, we have the, the general um, elementary uh, certification, that's the core subjects EC through six. Um, with our core subjects certification, um, there is a choice between either an ESL or a bilingual supplemental certification. Um, and, you know, what you choose depends a little bit on, on what you're, you know, capable of. You know, bilingual certification is going to involve the ability to, you know, to, to be bilingual, uh, to have that uh, as part of your background. There's different, different certification exams that are required as part of that. Um, but these are highly sought after certifications, um, especially in our region. Um, so core subjects EC, EC through six with either ESL or bilingual supplemental certification. And then we also have our secondary certification, which is going to be your seven through 12, uh, you know, middle school, high school. And within that, um, you are choosing a specific a subject that you would be uh, getting certified in. So you can see what we have available here, ELAR, social studies, life science, math, physical science, history, and kind of a general science. Um, so, you know, we will work with you kind of to, to see what's the best option for you. Um, the thing to always know is that once you earn an initial certification, you can always add additional certifications later. You know, if you um, you know, really wanted to teach a specific subject that we didn't offer a certification for. Once you got your early, your initial certification, you would be able um, to to add that on. Um, so, so keep that in mind. But this is what we have available for certification in our program. So, as far as the timeline, and so like we said, we're going to talk about two different programs: um, the ACP. And just to kind of give you a general overview of, of what these differences are, the ACP, the Alternative Certification Program, is going to lead to teacher certification. It is a post back program, which means it's a non-degree seeking program. You're not earning a degree. Uh, you are earning teacher certification, and that is the, the uh, only goal of that program. Um, our MAT with, with certification, the Master of Arts in Teaching, which we'll also be talking about, of course, is a master's degree program. So it's a little more, uh, there's there's more work involved in that. There's more coursework, which we'll kind of go over here in a little bit. Um, but essentially, you are earning the same teacher certification that you would be earning through the ACP, but you're also earning a master's degree at the same time, which can lead to uh, a lot more benefits um, career-wise. Um, and it's a good way to essentially, you know, knock out two things at the same time uh, while you're working on this teacher certification. Uh, so we're going to talk a little bit about the timeline of these. So for the ACP, for the Alternative Certification Program, uh, we have, uh, uh, our program has summer admission. Uh, so we basically, we admit once per year, and that is in the May mini semester, which is officially part of the summer um, here at UHD. It's the, the first session of the summer. Um, so classes will begin in the May mini semester. Uh, all students in the program will take a, a three-week May intensive class. It's a one-hour course with embedded field experience, uh, which is a, a required part of any teacher certification program. Um, so you're basically doing that one course in that May mini semester, which is very intensive. It's a short amount of time, uh, but you're doing that one course before moving on uh, into the summer coursework. Over the course of the summer, you would have four courses that you would take. There's three, those are uh, four three hour courses. You would take two in the first five week summer term, uh, which is the, you know going to basically be about early June to um, early July, middle of July. And then uh, two more courses in the second five week summer term, 
and we're going to show you what those courses would be um, in, on the next slide. Uh, then in August, you would officially begin either a teaching internship or a teaching residency. And we're going to talk a little bit more in detail about that later on. Uh, but the main thing that you can kind of see here is that basically three months after you started the program, you will have the opportunity to begin teaching. Um, how much you get paid to teach, what type of position it is, depends on whether you're doing an internship or a residency. And uh, Dr. Miller will go over that in more detail uh, a little bit down, down the line. While you're teaching, you are still taking courses. So during the fall semester, uh, you would have two classes that you would take uh, over the course of a 16-week fall semester, um, and then the same in the spring. So one of those courses is going to be, you know, a course that's helping kind of prepare you for your teaching career, prepare you for the certification exams that you might have to take. And the other course each semester is tied to that internship or residency. So it's not one that you would necessarily have to attend in person or anything. It's just getting you uh, support that you need during your first year of teaching. Then after that year of teaching, after all those courses, that's 27 uh, credit hours altogether. Program completion for the ACP. Uh, you have the, cert the teacher certification is awarded after successful completion of your internship or residency, all of your certification exams, and those 27 hours of coursework. So what does that look like class-wise? Uh, here is kind of an overview of what those different um, classes would be that you would be taking each semester. So you can see on this table, the left side of the table is the EC through six core subjects um, with ESL or bilingual supplemental certification. The right side of the table is going to be secondary. Now there's a lot of overlap between what classes you take depending on your certification area. But you can see a few things like in that summer five week one, the EC through six core subjects, um, you know, future teachers, students there will take read 3303. It's a curriculum course. That's something that's more directly related to being an elementary school teacher and helping prepare you for one of the very important exams that is required for that. Uh, whereas that exam and that kind of subject matter is not necessary for secondary. So there you would be taking uh, the, the educational technology course. So you can see how that kind of differs depending on what your certification area is. But this is basically how the program is laid out um, if you're doing the ACP. And you know we'll send this to you later. We won't go over every single course individually here, uh, but this kind of gives you an idea of, of what you might be studying and what that, that timeline is going to look like for you. All right, so um, now let's talk a little bit about the master's degree option, the, the Master of Arts in Teaching. Now, the structure itself is very similar to the ACP. Starts in the May mini semester. You have the one you know, intensive course during May, the same number of courses during the summer, you know, the two in the each five week summer term. Um, the main differences with the courses is that uh, you, you're essentially taking the classes together, but the students that are enrolled in the graduate level courses and the master's courses have additional coursework and higher expectations for exactly what you're going to be submitting and what's going to be expected for you. Uh, or from you in these classes. So, um, you know, the, the the program structure is very similar, um, really for the first year. Um, <clears throat> the main difference is being what's expected of you out of that coursework. Where it becomes different is that our master's degree, our MAT degree requires 36 credit hours. So the ACP is 27 credit hours, which means that those students that are completing that master's degree will need to complete an additional nine hours, additional three courses. Um, and that happens in the second summer. Um, so after you finish that first year of teaching, you finish those other 27 credit hours, those students doing the masters will then continue on into an additional nine hours that, that are completed over that summer. And then program completion and certification uh, will be awarded after you've completed the full MAT degree, you've, finish the internship or residency, all of your exams, and all of those 36 hours of coursework. So here's a little bit of what that looks like uh, for the master's program. So you can see the, the actual courses are different. Uh, what the, you know, the course numbers, some of the titles are a little different, um, but the subject matter is the same. Um, what, you know, what you'll see here is basically that 
that students that are enrolled in these courses are um, taking, you know, have additional coursework, additional things that are expected of you. The titles are different uh, because you're earning a master's degree, which means you need to be taking 5,000 level or 6,000 level graduate courses. Um, and then you can see the summer five week one and summer five week two at the bottom, those are the additional three, three courses that are required to earn that master's degree. Now, it's important to, to point out that this is something that you do have to choose from the very beginning. Um, it's not a situation where you can originally roll in the ACP, and then once you get to the end of it, decide, oh, I, I want to go ahead and do those last nine hours. That's not an option. You have to be enrolled in whichever option you choose from the very beginning, um, mainly because if you look at the courses, the courses that you're taking are different. If you took a bunch of undergraduate level courses, those couldn't be applied to completion of a master's degree. Um, so that's that's an important thing to keep in mind. All right, I think I'm turning it back over to Dr. Miller now. Yes, I am, to talk about the differences between this internship and residency that we've been talking about. So Dr. Miller? Okay, so the timeline that Mr. Kilgore just discussed with you doesn't change with these two options. You'll be doing field work for two long semesters in a row, no matter what, okay? That's that. So it's the same semesters, all of that jazz, okay? But there are two different options that we are offering to you, and you need to think carefully about which one you would want to do. The decision has to be made very early in the program. The first is what we've offered traditionally through the ACP, and that is the internship option. The internship option is um, earned when you have all of your content area tests passed before the school year starts, which means you've got a pretty intense summer, many, many plus the four summer classes, plus however many tests go with your certification area before August when you start a school district job. OK, so that's the thing. The state of Texas will let us offer an internship certificate to you if you pass all of your content tests. Now I'm going to look at I'm going to show you the list of tests in just a second. There's one test that they let you take after you started your internship. OK, so but what that does for you is that you're able to seek a district job with our recommendation and you'll be hired as a teacher of record for that full academic year. That translates whole salary, all benefits. You're employed by the school district under an internship certificate. You're in a classroom by yourself. You have a clinical coach coming to see you two to three lessons per semester to give you feedback on your teaching. That's the internship, okay? So in a nutshell, you take a lot of tests in the summer. Well, not a lot, some. Depends on what your certification area is. Bust your tail, and then you start in August with a teaching job, and you're paid as a teacher, and you've got a clinical coach coming to see you periodically, okay? Hopefully, that district and most of the districts in this area do have a mentor program for first-year teachers, and you'll be supported in that way, but our support is coming through that clinical coach coming to see you teach, okay? The other option is a residency. And that is the option that we use with all of our undergraduates, unless they're employed as paraprofessionals in the school districts. Um, and no certificate is required for this. We are placing you, and it's kind of a co-placement with the district. No testing requirement because there's no certification involved there. You're not given a one-year internship certificate. You're there as a student teacher, for lack of a better word, but we use the word resident, okay? We have a Gators to Teachers program that will help you with your placement. There are specific districts with whom we have agreements to do the residency placements because the districts are paying their residents, some residents, twenty dollars to $25,000 for the year to do the residency. Uh, one diff difference I didn't put on here. With the internship, you're working as a full-time teacher all year long. That's Monday through Friday, you know dawn till dusk, whatever that ends up being, right? Um, with the residency, it's a phase in. You would be doing about two days in the classroom a week for the first part of the semester of that first semester, say the fall semester, and then you'd gradually increase to three days a week. After the holidays, you come back in January, you're in there for five days a week. So it increases two days to three days to five days a week across the year as it goes. OK, that's why you're looking at a little less money. Right. But you're here's what you get. 
you get the opportunity to take your test over a longer period of time. And you have incredible amounts of coaching and support for your first year in the classroom. You've got your mentor teacher. You're not in a classroom by yourself. You're co-teaching with a skilled teacher. Um, you have a site coordinator. You'll have somebody who's representing the university and who is on campus very regularly to check on you, to see how things are going, to help you facilitate any requests or situations or discussions or just advice that you need. You'll also have the clinical coach coming to see you for not just observations, but walkthroughs and we'll have um, conferences with you before and after you teach the lesson and giving you a lot of reflection and feedback time. So those are the two options. You need to start considering which one you want to do. And you have to give us that decision pretty quickly in. And I'm happy to talk more details about that if you have questions later. All right, great. Um, so let's talk a little bit about the admission process here um, and what the differences are between the, the two different programs. So I'll try to go through this um, somewhat quickly. The application um, is officially opening soon. Uh, the, ap the application for the ACP uh, for this next summer is going to open um, next Monday on November 6th. So you can actually start this process pretty early on. Um, but basically, as we mentioned, the, you know, we have summer admission only for that May mini semester. The 2024 application deadline is going to be April 12th. So you could start the application as early as next Monday uh, but the absolute deadline is going to be April 12th, which is about a, a month before classes begin in that May mini semester. Um, so for ACP, there's, there's an important distinction in the application process of what type of student you are at the university. So as I mentioned before, uh, people in the ACP, since you're non-degree seeking, uh, you're applying to the university as a post-baccalaureate student, non-degree seeking student, um, basically, what you have to do is apply to the university through um, the app to applytexas.org, uh, just like anybody who's applying as an undergraduate student or a post-bac student here. So you are first applying for admission as a post-bac student to UHD. That is not the application to the ACP. You have to be admitted to the university as a post-bac student before you can uh, be admitted to our ACP. Um, so the application uh, for admission to UHD uh, for a post -bac student, there's a $50 application fee, um, and you would want to be, of course, applying for summer admission. Sometimes people will try to apply, say, for the spring. If you applied for the spring and you didn't enroll in any classes at the university, then your admission would be canceled. So if you wanted to apply for the spring and, and take a class, maybe you know that you want to be a math teacher and you want to take one math class this spring to kind of refresh your memory you're more than welcome to do that. But if you don't want to do that and you want to um, just start with us in the summer, you should apply as a post -bac student um, for summer admission. And you can always check with the admissions office about what the process is of doing that. Uh, but it's important to note that admission to UHD as a post -bac student does not guarantee admission into, into the ACP. That's a separate process. Um, now, uh, as part of the process of applying to, to the university, you'll have to submit transcripts uh, showing that you've earned a bachelor's degree. We're looking for a minimum overall GPA of 2.5 or higher. Um, you're also going to need a minimum of 12 hours in your certification area, 12 credit hours that you completed, um, which for the most part is, is pretty common, um, 15 if you're trying to do math or science and also a 2.5 GPA in those courses specific to your subject area. Um, so once you're admitted to the university as a post-bac student, then you can start the ACP application, which is in a site called TK20. Um, we're gonna link our, I'll show a link to our ACP webpage later that has all of this information on there as well. TK20 is an internal applications uh, system that we use. Um, you'll complete the ACP application in TK20 after you're admitted to, to UHD as a post -bac student. There's a $35 teacher candidacy application fee. So that's separate from the application fee to the university. Um, and as I mentioned before, our application will open in TK20 on November 6th. That's next Monday. Within that application, uh, there is a recommendation form that you can, there's a link to that. You have uh, three people fill out recommendations to recommend you for admission to this program. Um, and then 
There's a few short answer essay questions. And then once you have completed that application and submitted it, we'll review it and we will schedule you for a teacher candidacy interview um, if, if your application receives that initial approval to move forward. Um, so like I said, that's a lot of information. I'll share this with you uh, later and all of this is on our website. Um, so, so don't worry if you didn't you know, get that all right then. Now uh, for the MAT, if you're applying to that, it's a completely different process. <laughs> um, even though the program is pretty much ex uh, exactly the same, the process is different because you're applying for admission into a master's program. Um, application deadline is the same, um, but the application, uh, since you're applying for a master's program, you're not applying as a post-bac student, you're applying as a master's degree student to the Master of Arts in Teaching. Um, so you wouldn't apply through Apply Texas. Uh, there's a new application system that we have for graduate programs. Uh, that QR code there uh, will take you to the page where you can create that application. Um, so when I share this with you, I'll send this to you by email tomorrow, you'll have access to that. Um, the GPA requirements are the same, uh, but when you're filling out the original application to the master's program, you uh, will uh, request three recommendation letters that's through the application. You'll enter uh, a name and email address of the people you want to do those recommendations, um, and they will complete that and submit that. So there's no sending back and forth of letters and things like that. Um, and then there's also a requirement for a personal statement of 700 words or more on how you believe your educational and professional background will lead to your success in this program. So there's a little more writing involved in the application for this program. Um, because that's typically what's involved in master's degree classes. Um, after you have had your initial application materials reviewed, we will then, um, most likely me, I will notify you that you can start the teacher candidacy application, which is very similar to the ACP application, and that's in TK20 as well. Um, and then, of course, the teacher candidacy interview, which is the same as the ACP. So once you get to that point in TK20 where you start filling out that application, then it goes back to being a little bit more of a similar process. So yes, it's a, it's, it's can be a little confusing, you know, with the differences between them, but once you've decided which one of these options you want to apply for, you just go full steam with that and you don't have to worry about what the requirements are uh, for the other end. And I will, I'm the main point of contact for these programs. So if you ever have any questions about um, what you need to do as you're going through the application process, you can always reach out to me um, and I will have my uh, email address listed at the end of the presentation. All right, so I'm going to turn it back over to Dr. Miller real quick. We have just a few slides left to talk about the certification exams that she mentioned a little bit earlier. Oh, yes, very quickly. Um, I'll probably talk too long on that first slide, making sure I covered everything that Alfredo would want me to cover. Um, okay, so certification exam requirements. The stuff in bold black print is everyone. You have a content exam and a pedagogy exam. Everyone takes the PPR. That's not considered the content exam. Remember, with the internship, you have to pass all your content exams before you start the internship. PPR is the one that you can take during the school year, okay? Okay. Now, what does the content exam look like? If you're doing a high school subject, a secondary subject, you know, middle school and high school, it's just the one exam for that subject. But if you're EC through six with ESL supplemental or EC through six with bilingual supplemental, I've listed the tests for you there. So for ESL, it's the science of teaching reading along with your content exam, which means the core subjects test for EC through six. So you have a content exam plus the science of teaching reading plus the ESL supplemental exam. For bilingual, you've got your content exam, which is the core subjects EC through six exam, same as the ESL folks. Um, you take the STR, same, but your other two exams are different, bilingual supplemental and then the BTLPT, which is the Spanish language knowledge exam. It's got um, written, oral, and visual, all that's kind of wrapped up in multiple choice. It's all in there with the BTLPT. Yeah, so it's it's important to kind of consider what the, you know, what your timeline is for your certification area. Obviously, people who are doing secondary only have two exams that are required as part of that. That's the content and the pedagogy and professional responsibilities. As you start doing other um, areas, there's more exams required. Um, and you have to really time that out to make sure that you complete those 
you know, that you can complete them in, in a certain amount of time. You have a certain number of attempts um, and um, um, amount of time that you have to wait if you didn't pass a certain exam. Um, so, you know, we always make sure, you know, you get your approval to take these exams through our program and we make sure that you are, um, you know, on track uh, throughout the entire time that you're in the program. So we're able to keep track of what exams you've taken, what you still have left. And we have a great certification coordinator, uh, Ms. Ackroyd, uh, who will always be in touch with you to make sure that you are uh, on track with your exams. Um, all right, and then uh, t tuition and fees. So Dr. Miller, I think this is you as well, right? All right, so undergraduate tuition is very different from graduate level tuition. So you can see that difference in amounts right there, okay? Um, because you're getting a master's degree. Yeah. It's a special thing, right? Um, so your total tuition and fees, if you're seeking to go the alternative certification route, which is, as Mr. Kilgore said, a post-baccalaureate non-degree seeking option, um, you're looking at around 9600 bucks. okay? Uh, if you go over to uh, the master's, you're looking at eighteen nine. And so I bet your big question is, why do I pay double? <laughs> why do I want to do more? Well, you've got nine extra hours of coursework that you're paying for at the more expensive graduate rate, um, you are getting a degree out of it. So there are certain types and, and pathways to financial aid that would be open to you that wouldn't be open just for you taking an ACP program, okay? Um, your ACP program is dependent upon how much financial aid you received in your undergraduate career already. There's like a pot of money. And once you're done with that, you're done with that. Whereas when you go in for a graduate degree, it opens up a new direction for you for applying for financial aid and scholarships and that sort of thing. OK, uh, with both of them, you have the certification test and they run anywhere from one hundred and sixteen to one hundred and thirty four dollars each. The STR is the one that is one hundred and thirty four dollars. So if you're secondary, that won't be a concern. Both years will be one hundred and sixteen. Um, but if you are doing EC through six, you'll have that slightly more expensive test of one thirty four. That's all we have for you today, but we're here for questions and answers. I know Mr. Kilgore is recording this. Oh, he's got one more. Sorry. I was yeah, ending yeah, us too early. I forgot about That's this. A good so, one. Uh, I will mention that uh, we partner with an organization called Teach for Houston um, that you can go to. It's free to sign up for an account with them, but if you know you're going to apply uh, for one of these programs, you can sign up for an account with them. They will help you uh, make sure, uh, you know, as you're going through the application process to make sure that you are getting everything submitted on time, getting everything complete. They do have uh, fee reimbursements, application fee reimbursements, and also uh, scholarship opportunities. So it's free to sign up for an account with them. We partner with them. They send, uh, you know, potential teachers to us and vice versa. Um, so if you're interested in signing up for an account with them, uh, that information is there. Uh, so, you know, keep that in mind. And now, we will uh, turn it over for questions. You can see our contact information, the links to our web pages. Um, so are there any questions for us? Uh, 